Okay, thank you for the introduction. I will try to show you something different than usual today from the hardware perspective, especially. We are mainly hardware design and integrator. Let me briefly introduce the company where I work, which is E4 Computer Engineering. We are based in Italy. And we are a small medium enterprise that since 10 years works mainly in HPC, high performance computing and related stuff. We are quite happy of how it's growing the company. And since uh, some years, uh, we started also to have a look to the market, uh, which is very different actually, based on ARM solution. We were one of the first company betting on the possibility to use ARM in uh, computing related stuff, particularly high performance computing. And uh, together with uh, another Italian company called Seiko, we made the first small board development kit to do HPC on ARM. At that time it was a Tegra 3 with a Quadro 1000. We used the Tegra 3 because it was able to support PCI Express communication. And uh, the GPU of the Tegra 3 wasn't able to run CUDA code. So that's this small board. We have integrated the board into a chassis. And we made a small cluster of eight blade plus a front end. There was only the possibility to cross compile your code. And uh, it was a funny period because everything was very difficult, actually. No libraries, no compilers, no optimization. A lot of work to do. But we made a lot of experience. And uh, after this first tentative approach, we tried to get some good numbers. If we compare, at that time, we compare our small first Arca system that was a single board like this one, I'm presented here with an Intel plus M2070, 2075. At that time, we were able to do the 26% of the performance in terms of max flops, the 14% in terms of fast Fourier transform, and so on and so forth. If you compare this result with the power consumption you had on that board, it was amazing because you could see that power consumption was incredibly smaller and lower than the power consumption of a standard server. So we got excited by our work and we started to collaborate also with some research group. And uh, the idea was to design a real compute node for high performance computing based on R. Again, in 2012, the only available ARM supporting GPU was Tegra 3. We connected this Tegra 3 through a PLX to a K20. And uh, we also introduced a Mellanox ConnectX. The challenge was to use ConnectX with Tegra and K20. Okay, the challenge was very, very hard. At the end, we were able to create such a machine. So here you can see the diagram. A Q7 module based on Tegra 3, a carrier board connected to a PCI Express to a PLX, and the PLX was providing all the PCI Express connectivity to the NVIDIA K20 and all add-ons card. One of the add-on card was a ConnectX 3. The machine was looking like this from the physical point of view. Two systems were in a, in a single chassis connected outside with the rest of the world through a QFSAP and some other connectors. And we built up a quite large cluster based on this compute node. This was part of uh, the project Mont Blanc in Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So from the theoretical point of view, you get an efficiency which is eight times better than 2670 and five times more efficient than a Xeon CPU, CPU on double precision. These numbers are theoretical. It's actually a marketing slide, you can say. Because if you try to run a code, then starts the problem. You need a 100% CUDA core. 
you need to have low communication, and so many other problems that can come out. But anyway, we built a very nice cluster made of 78 compute nodes, plus the logins, the network, and everything. Uh, there was a very difficult time because the connectivity through the ConnectDish 3 wasn't so good due to a lack of a feature in the Tegra 3. Of course, it was an ARM SOC for mobiles, okay? This system actually exists, and you can uh, ask access uh, to the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. So this is called the Pedra Forca cluster. It's one of the prototype uh, of Mont Blanc project. So going beyond the limit of the first SOC we used, we decided to move to an ARM 64-bit, a good one, at least a much, much better SOC compared to the Tegra 3 for servers. That is the XGen1 from Applied Micro. This was the first example of uh, SOC made for server class machines. They call Brownie these cores, but basically they are very similar to the A57. They are a slightly modified version of the A57 from ARM. They have a coherent fabric that allow a quite good speed in and out from the memory. And you have 10 gigabit integrated, 16 lane PCI Express Gen 3, ECC controller. So the full pack of feature you need in a server class machine. So the first thing we did is to replace the previous board with the new one the Mastman development kit from APM. So we took out our previous uh, Tegra 3 and we replaced with uh, this development board. The f this first prototype had a PCI Express Gen 3, eight lanes to a PLX switch, and then there were PCI Express Gen 2 times 4 to the cards. These are the values from the theoretical point of view. Again, you have 1.17 teraflop peak performance, 4.68 gigaflops per watt. And a power consumption estimated of 250 watts. This was the first beast we did with ARM 64-bit. And actually, it was much way better than the Tegra 3, because it was designed to do this job. But we still had some problem in the bandwidth in and out from the device to the host, host to device. The limitation was the PCI Express times four Gen 2. Okay, so you still have some low numbers. Then in between you have a PLX, and from the PLX you have to move to the, the SOC. So, not a perfect uh, communication system, but much, much better than what we had previous. You have to consider that this SOC is capable to do 30 gigabyte per second of uh, communication from the SOC to the memory compared to the 1.4, 1.5 of the Tegra 3. So it's 20 times better. Anyway, this limitation was there. And same problem with the ConnectX3. The bandwidth was the maximum achievable with the PCI Express Gen 2 and a reasonable latency. Not the, the best one for InfiniBand, but a reasonable latency. Okay, so first idea, let's remove this PLX in between, try to use as many lanes that are available into the SOC from the PCI Express Gen 3. We did it, and this now is a machine. You can see in our booth, and you, you can buy. It's actually a product. It is officially released. And uh, we made it in a two unique box with one SOC, up to two NVIDIA Kepler. You can choose between K20, K40, and K80, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM memory, and then all the rest of the connectivity, so 10 gigabit, InfiniBand, and everything you need. This machine is much better done because you have PCI X press Gen 3 times A to the Mellanox and Gen 3 times 8 to the K20 and K40 or K80. 
recently. And what we have done, together with, with Mellanox and NVIDIA, was also to pre-install all the system. The installation of this machine is not so easy. You need to deal with your boot, uh, you need to deal with some update of the kernel. So there are, there are still quite a lot of issues you have to solve in order to have the system running. So we do it for you. If you buy a system from us, you will receive the pre-installed system and all the recipe to do it by yourself. Which is good, actually, save a lot of time if you want to develop your application on, on an ARM machine. If you want to play with the machine itself, well, you can do it, and please give us a feedback. Maybe you, we can improve our recipe. Anyway, we have NVIDIA CUDA 6.5, officially available from the website. You can download it from the NVIDIA website. You have MPI, GNU compilers. We do a lot of tests with shock in order to provide you the right performance that should be in the system. And you have uh, the standard stack for clusters. So you can, you can use a resource queuing manager, monitoring tools, parallel shell, restore from bare metal. So you have the, the basic tool to create a small cluster of this machine and to try to do high performance computing. The machine looks like this. So you have a K80, the Mellanox, uh, and the motherboard, redundant power supply. Okay, for the show, we replaced the usual hot swap back playing with this nice fancy bezel. Okay, we want to have everything orange just because we choose this color, but it looks like a fully standard machine. Okay, so you can have uh, the normal 19 inch machine in your data center with an ARM instead of uh, an x86. Some numbers. So, <coughs> K20, the device we have used to, to do the benchmarks, still have generation two in the communication for the PCI Express, while K40 and K80 have gen three. And uh, the bandwidth uh, was limited to a time eight, but we were able to achieve more or less the, the bandwidth we need to, to have in a PCI Express times eight gen three, gen two, sorry. This is good. It means that you have the performance there and you can upload and unload the data from the host to the device and from the device to the host uh, at a reasonable speed. Then we run the maximum flops, so driver run properly, machine runs properly, because you can get actually the data sheet values. So you have 3.1 and 1.17 gigaflops in single and double precision, which is the, the value that you can have from the data sheet in, of NVIDIA or in a standard x86 machine. So again, good. And also, sorry, and also the bandwidth of the device itself was good. Okay, it was important to understand if there, there were any problem from the electrical point of view, any problem from the driver point of view, operative system, and all the other stuff. Ping pong test latency with the Mellanox card connected. Now we are in the correct latency and the correct bandwidth. So it means we recover the right latency and bandwidth for the PCI Express times eight we had in the, in the machine. Okay, now I want to show you a couple of examples of what we have run into the machine. I choose the code called LAMMPS. In particular, I used the, the Van der Waals force field, which is a very well accelerated using GPUs inside this code is basically everything offloaded into the GPU. And what we have discovered, one single machine of our machine, okay, was comparable to 32 cores x86. Here you have the configuration. So in one case there were Intel compilers, MKL, all the nice fancy stuff 
from uh, x86. For ARM, we use GC GCC plus ARM and VCC for the GPU part, of course, FFTWW, and so on and so forth. The other was a dual E5-2650 V2 with InfiniBand QDR, so pretty standard machine, two of them, and the ARM Xgene 1 plus one GPU K20M. This was the comparison between the two, one million particle with Van der Waals force field. Very simple force field, actually. I wanted to be in the safe side, so something that accelerate properly in the GPU. Time to solution, so it means lower is better. We were able to run our test slightly faster than 32 cores x86 in an ARM machine. Okay, that's, What's yeah. The power? The power, I, I will show you later some numbers on the power, but uh, actually it is it's below 200 watts, this machine. And with the, the, the load you have in the LAM MPS. Okay, it's below 200 watts. I will show you later the maximum load, what we have done with the standard GPU barns. Yeah, the comparison uh, in a machine like this, you have more or less uh, between 350 and 400 watts per node. So in this case, you have 32 cores, means two nodes. Uh, so you compare 700 to 800 watts against 200. That's the difference, okay? Another benchmark, again, with LAM MPS. In this case, I have compared two standard servers. One is our machine with K20, and the other one is uh, an E5. 2630 V3 with a K20. As I said before, this code is fully offloaded into the GPU. So what we expect is they should run more or less at the same speed, I would expect. And actually this is the case. So in a machine accelerated with an x86, you have a time to solution which is comparable to an ARM. Of course, this small difference, you can see here, so it's slightly faster, the x86, if because of you have the, the initial part and the ending part of the code is in, in the CPU. So you do some summation in the CPU at the end of uh, your calculation. For this reason, of course, the ARM SOC is not as powerful as an x86 core. But anyway, it looks like our machine in GPU performs at the same level of a, a standard machine x86. Here you are the, the numbers about power consumption. So the comparison is done exactly in the same, uh, the same setup we have seen before. So CUDA 6.5, compiler GNU, Kubeless, QFFT, and these two machines. The comparison has been done with synthetic benchmark where you calculate the max flops of of your GPU, so it means that it should run at the maximum power of the GPU itself. In fact, you get the same number in terms of gigaflops between the two machines, but you get a huge different power. So the average load power consumption in our machine, RK003, is 229 watts, while in the Xeon E5, you have 410. That's the difference. And this is due to the node itself. So you have to maintain up your x86 machine of all cores, all memory, and everything. If you do just the, the proportion between the power consumption and the flops, you get a result which is basically twice better for ARM compared to the x86 machine. I wouldn't say that is a, a great solution. You know, because it's still, they say SOC very young, there are still problems. I wouldn't put this in a huge production environment. But is the first example of something that we will see in the future, okay? You can, you can do experiment on our machine, you can do whatever you want. You don't feel the difference between an x86 and an ARM. You have to look in CPU info to get the difference, okay? And uh, what is a little bit surprising, it was at least for us at the beginning, is the idle power consumption. In one case it's 92 watts, in the other case it's 151. 
that's not so good. I mean, 92, why 92? And then we discovered why. Because we use passive GPUs, and uh, in our machine, we don't have a driver to control the fans at the moment. We are designing it. And basically, the, the fan is running at full speed, even if you are in Rindle, unfortunately, for passive machine. Because it's not like in an x86 machine where you can do this stuff at the BIOS level. You don't have a BIOS in, in ARM. You need to design your small driver that goes at the system, operative system level and control your, the fans of, of your GPU. Yep. Can I ask you a stupid question? Instead of running a dual E5, you could just run an I3. Yep. Uh, that also can get ECC memory and then you shape up automatic M41. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's perfect, your, your comment. It, it is true, actually. You can do with an E3, and actually this SOC is more comparable to an E3 performance, or even... You can run an I3, even, uh, that's what I really meant, with a dual core, which also can have ECC memory, and then shape it down to 35 watts for that processor at, at maximum yeah. PEC. So why, why wouldn't you do that? Why we did that? No, why wouldn't you do that? You shape up maybe 170 watts almost of the dual E5 chip. Yeah, uh, we, we did it uh, actually because it, it was the only available ARM V8. I will show you something later that is much more closer to uh, an E5 as an ARM SOC, okay. and this is the direction where we are going, okay? Of course, it's not a... a a right comparison. You should use an E3 with a K20, probably, with more or less the same TDP of the SOC you have above, and then you can see that the, the power consumption is similar, yeah. for sure. Yeah. The performance, actually, are, uh, if you have an offloaded, f full offloaded code into the GPU, the performance should be similar. Should be similar. Uh, we work on, on, on the ARM area more to explore to understand if it is feasible or not. If you look at uh, what we have seen before for the Tegra 3 and what we achieve with x 1, it's a huge jump forward, you know? It's a leap forward, huge. And then you can have something even better probably in the next series, and I will show you in a minute. So we are improving our ARM solution day over day with new SOCs, and of course, Nowadays, this is the best we can do. We should compare the best we can do with the best you can have in, uh, in x86. And, and there is, of course, there is no story. I mean, this machine can be equipped with eight GPUs. This one with one or two, if you're lucky. That means that there, there's still a huge difference between the two platforms. But, but the performance per watt? The performance? Catch up on performance the performance per watt, if you increase the number of the GPU in the Xeon E5, then this number will grow because you increase a lot the number of GPUs inside the same system and at the end of the day you divide the CPU part by the number of the GPUs and more or less you achieve the same value with a more fat node, okay? That's, of course, a, it's, it's a limit of our platform. Okay. Next step. Next step is 48 cores. Is the, the SOC designed by Kevium. It's called Thunder X. You can see it at the Kevium booth or our booth here in, uh, in GTC. And uh, this system is single or dual socket. It has 48 cores per socket. It has integrated PCI Express SATA, 10 and 40 gigabit Ethernet. And then there are also other functionality that may be less interesting in high-performance computing. But this object here is something more comparable to an E5, okay? And we need a machine. Actually, it's under test. We need to better, uh, better stabilize drivers and, and performance and a lot of things to do. GCC is not providing good results at the moment, so it's a lot of work to be done in this machine before we can sell it. But we hope in a few months to be able to deliver the, the system as we have done with XG, okay? And in this case, you have a 2U form factor with one KVM 48 cores, one NVIDIA 
K80 to K20, 128 gigabytes, and then you have also 40 gigabit Ethernet integrated. This machine, we expect to have similar power consumption than a, a Xeon E5, similar performances. What change between this machine and an X86 is a little bit the workload where they perform at the best. So in an environment where you can have a lot of shared memory, independent tasks, maybe this can have an advantage if you have less threads that can run together, that less parallelization, maybe an x86 will be better. But we have to discover this. Let's see. We received the platform very, very recently, and we are working on it. And I would like to thank all the guys that are developing uh, the solution in E4. Then there are a lot of people in NVIDIA, in Mellanox, in Cavium, and many others, and also Filippo Mantovani for the support in Mont Blanc project. And uh, I want to thank you for the attention and come to our booth. We will give you a very nice orange T-shirt and explain the, <laughs> the, the machine functionalities. Thank you. <laughs>